Muslims, they do it in the other way. Towards the... Why would we change it? Think about it scientifically. God is everywhere. Do we really need to do this or not? The fact is this, as I said before, based on that prime directive of Abdul Baha, the spiritual world and the physical world are counterpart of each other. So, every word has a spirit. I've given this example before, why the word of God is different from the others. I've said that. We say to a hungry child, eat, eat your food. We as an outsider, as a grandpa, as a grandma, as a doctor, as a priest, child does not respond to one of, any one of those. But soon the mother says, eat, the child eats. It seems there's a frequency of an understanding going there that the child register the word of the mother and its relationship to him. So the word of God has that effect on the words. So there is a spirit in it. That's why people listen to it. Because they feel the person who said these things, he's related to them. They feel the relevance to it. Different from other people. And as soon as the religion of God changes from Islam to the Baha'i faith. So God leaves those words. The Spirit of God leaves those words, just like a clothes. He takes his clothes off and changes his clothes to something else. And people go into the rope and again they say, oh, holy robe of Muhammad. But there's no Muhammad in it. That robe is just a clothes right now. Useless. Derogatory. So, as soon as the religion changes, or other words, God is not behind these words anymore, they turn into habits. They used to be medicine, these words, these habits, these acts. They could do things. They were a catalyst. They made the reaction to take place. Prayer would help people from doing bad things. It's like a vessel protect their faith in it. Now he's not behind it. But people are keep doing it. Why? Because it has become a habit. Abdullah clearly says, we are in love with the truth of Baha'u'llah. Not his body, not himself even. So if tomorrow Baha'u'llah is gone and another prophet comes, we understand the truth, we go to him. We worship the truth of Jesus and the Moses and Buddha and Krishna and Baha'u'llah, not their personalities. And he says that. So many religions of the past, in the Some Answers Question, the book, he says that, they stuck to Moses because they just loved him too much. It becomes a personal matter. It was no longer the truth. But Abdul Wal says, refrain from that. You have to, you know, go. So like this, just imagine, attached to this prayers and this fasting and a lot of other ceremonies comes Islams within these vessels of Islams. These guys in let's say Saudi Arabia or Kuwait or Dubai or these fundamentalists, how much cruelty is happening towards these women. They are identified as half of the man, half right. They can never assume equality. So, tomorrow if the man from the Saudi Arabia does not go to prayer, listen to this, but stop him from doing to going to everyday prayer. No more fasting. Don't do none of those things that you do. Then he can't come home and order his wife around because you broke his values. It's an empty shell he uses to order people around. This is why these things are changed. There's a lot of these things in the Kitab Aghdas uh, that Baha'u'llah so stops in the Baha'i fit. One of them, for example, Abdul Baha says, cremation. Hindus do that. He says, don't do it anymore. <clears throat> the body is born through a process, natural process of integration. Let it disintegrate the same way or these ascetisms. 
people get into the cave or hanging from the tree and they think this is a spirituality. Baha'u'llah says absolutely nothing. There's none of that action, there's any fruit in it. A sowing the seed into the desert. No tree comes out of it. Although the action is there, but the farmer's land is no good. There is a sign of uh, uh, endeavor and trial, but you're trying to grow life in the desert. Or one, you have to change the land. Land has. So these are the actions. In Islam, ooh, lots of them in Islam, especially in Islam. Muslim, they do not wear silk. Allah says a lot. They don't drink into uh, gold and silver. Baha'u'llah says you can. Music, totally forbidden in Islam. We can't hear music. Baha'u'llah says the spiritual is a spiritual food. Have it. Or big beard, you know, a sign of distinguishing yourself with others, you know, turbans and this and that. Baha'u'llah says there's no merit in that either. People are free to have beard or whatever they want to wear or not. There are many things, according to the Muslim, is called najes. Najes means untouchable. You can't touch. If you touch a Christian, is a najes. You have to go wash yourself at home. Can you believe that? It is. Or they apply the same thing to the things. For example, semen is a najes. If it has hands goes to it, you have to go completely take a shower and everything. Well, it says that's irrelevant. Especially. Uh, priesthood to have a mullah with a beard and have a turban. Baha'u'llah says go under the stone. Do not go under that turban. Under that thing that they put in their head. It's that bad. At one point people used to be a mullah or a priest because there was uh, Reading books it was the difficult thing. There was not book. The man had to spend all his life to go read the book. Then he would come to the village and talk to people because they didn't know. But today everything is available. This uh, position and this profession is gone. Right now, these so-called religious leaders are dividing people into the groups and causing them you know, contention and conflict and fight between them. Absolutely forbidden about it. Or taking, getting many wives. It's totally forbidden. And the Baha'i faith. How could? Because this is a sign of, again, inequality. A man can have many wives and a wife cannot have many husbands. If it goes that way, it should go this way too. But the moment you do this, immediately you're creating that love towards the parents, towards the children. It creates confusions. A child sees many mothers. His relationship to the mother kind of dies out. He always look at father. I have only one father. This is the reason uh, people of the past in Islamic country or other, they would never say oh, mother was irrelevant. It's my father. Who's my father? Because the father was one, the women were many. So that's forbidden. Or in Muslims, uh, so as in the Christianity, people they go over the pulpit, try to talk. Forbidden. No distinguishing on that manner. Even distinguishing yourself, that Muslim, they cut their head. The hair, haircut, they make themselves bald, you know. It's crazy that uh, some of the racists here even do that. That is not also acceptable in the Muslim faith because. Uh, you're trying to intimidate people with it. No intimidations, no distinguishing between you and others. And in Islam also congregational prayer is forbidden in the Baha'i faith except for the prayer for the dead. When you get together, the spirituality goes, it becomes a social order because thousands of people they see in the mosque, they see each other in the, in the congregational prayer. So congregational prayer in Islam was for the, for the a social event. Arabs were always Bedouvians, they were not seeing each other, they were not aware of each other. Muhammad tried through the Hajj every year and through these prayers bring them together so they can speak and talk and know each other. 
the usage of that is gone today. Therefore, there is no point in congregational prayer because their spirituality is disrupted. Now, a Baha'i has to go in the room, close the door, and pray to his God by himself. It's a relationship between you and your God. Others do not need to know it. It's very developed. You know, it's, a, it's an intimate relationship between your God. You do not want your intimate relationship to be seen by others. We don't have sex in front of others. It's like that. It's very sentimental. It's very private. It's between you and your God. So this helps it to become more close the individual gets to God because there is nobody to disrupt him. So in Christianity, for example, uh, confession of the sins, you know, to others. Oh my God, I'm not going to talk about this. How bad this is that a person to go and speak about what he did to others. It's just going to encourage him to do it more. He learned the shame, the sense of shame is gone now. I said everything I did to somebody. And I'm not even questioned for it. I just said to the priest and I'm gone now. The poor priest that has to hear all of these things and he can't do anything about it. So it's absolutely, this has not been a part of Christianity. This has been embedded, planted into the Christianity by whoever uh, was trying to find out what people are doing probably or something. Uh, there's no spiritual merit in this, but there's totally wrong because uh, you have conflict with what you have done. You might finally go and do something, but even you go talk to some authority and he is not going to do anything about it. But the fact that you said these things, that encourages you to go and do it again.